Well, good morning, everyone, or perhaps I should say good afternoon, good evening. Depends what time you're tuning in. But whatever the time of day, you are very well, warm welcome to you to the parish of St Peter and St Paul, Tunbridge. Although, as you can see, I'm actually in my study. But that's by the by. We're in God's presence wherever we are, and it's good to be able to share together in a reading, reflection and prayer. But before we do, a few notices for your prayer and attention. We're now going to be issuing monthly a new parish newsletter, which for those in the parish on email will come out by that means. Otherwise, it will be sent out by post to you that have been receiving our sort of ad hoc postal uh, distribution. There are four sections to this newsletter. There will be a message from Wendy, our associate vicar, from the church wardens, from the youth and ministry team and there will be a parish church family news section. Particularly to draw to your attention this time and those in getting the postal version should get it in the next day or so. It's to actually say there is a, in the church warden section there are four questions which they are asking for advice on if you like or your views on. So um, in relation to the vacancy and the appointment of a new vicar. So do please look at that and do please uh, get back to them. If by any chance you're listening and you haven't received your newsletter, then also let us know. Um, also welcome any comments, constructive comments, criticism on the letter and whether you found it helpful. Many of you will have replied um, way back, perhaps, or certainly last year, to the uh, Living Questions um, initiative. Those results have been analysed um, and the initial results are available on the website. There will be further detailed information coming out in due course. So a moment's quiet before we open in prayer. Let us pray. Lord, Heavenly Father, almighty and everlasting God, who has brought us safely to the beginning of this day, Defend us in the same with thy mighty power, and grant that this day we fall into no sin, neither run into any kind of danger, but that all our doings may be ordered by thy governance, to do always that is righteous in thy sight, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And so the Collect for the third Sunday of Epiphany. Almighty God, whose Son has revealed in signs and miracles the wonder of your saving presence. Renew your people with your heavenly grace, and in all our weakness sustain us by your mighty power. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. So our reading this morning is from Acts chapter 22 and I'm going to start reading at the first verse. Brothers and fathers, listen now to my defence. When the crowd heard him speak to them in Aramaic, they became very quiet. Then Paul said, I am a Jew born in Tarsus of Cilicia, but brought up in this city. Under Gamaliel, I was thoroughly trained in the law of our fathers and was just as zealous for God as any of you are today. I persecuted the followers of this way to their death, arresting both men and women and throwing them into prison, as also the high priest and all the council can testify. I even obtained letters from them to their brothers in Damascus and went there to bring these people as prisoners to Jerusalem as to be punished. About noon, as I came near Damascus, suddenly a bright light from heaven flashed around me. I fell to the ground and heard a voice say to me, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? Who are you, Lord? I asked. I am Jesus of Nazareth, whom you are persecuting, he replied. My companions saw the light, but they did not understand the voice of him who was speaking to me. What shall I do, Lord? I asked. Get up, the Lord said, and go into Damascus. There you will be told all that you have been assigned to do. My companions led me by the hand into Damascus, 
because the brilliance of the light had blinded me. A man named Ananias came to see me. He was a devout observer of the law and highly respected by all the Jews. He stood beside me and said, Brother Saul, receive your sight. And at that very moment, I was able to see him. Then he said, The God of our fathers has chosen you to know his will and to see the righteous one and to hear words from his mouth. You will be his witness to all men of what you have seen and heard. And now, what are you waiting for? Get up, be baptised and wash your sins away, calling on his name. So, to set the scene, Paul was in Jerusalem. He'd been attacked by the crowd and then arrested. He wanted to speak to the people and got the commander's permission to do so by speaking and explaining to the commander in Greek and saying that he was from Tarsus and he was a Jew. Paul was taking a risk and having just been beaten up by the mob, he wasn't in a great position to speak to them. And we know, don't we, from recent events in Washington, just how much mayhem a zealous mob can cause. But as he expressed in his letter to the Romans, Paul really had these people on his heart and he'd never stop praying for them. His message was an important one. Luke, the writer of the book of Acts, probably took something of a risk too with his readers because he described the whole episode of Paul's conversion in chapter 9 and does so again in chapter 26, albeit briefly. He clearly wanted us to learn from this amazing story. So let's take up the challenge listening to Paul's words. So what does Paul's approach to speaking to the people tell us about witnessing for God and sharing and giving our testimonies, something we sometimes find quite difficult. The following five points, which I will briefly highlight, will have been made elsewhere, I'm sure. Some will be obvious, but well worth emphasising. First, it is very important to identify with our listeners or our readers. Paul immediately explains that he was a Jew and that he was a man of Tarsus which was an important city, and he'd been brought up in Jerusalem. He was also a rabbi who had learnt and studied under Gamaliel. He had also been a persecutor of the Christians, whom he saw as a threat to the Jewish faith. All this would have identified Paul with the crowd, with those who were listening to him. In each situation in which we find ourselves, we might have to think how to identify with those with whom we are inter interacting. It may just be simply our body language, or we may have to speak or write a bit more clearly. But to help in this way, secondly, we may have to admit our weaknesses. Paul describes what he now sees as his faults in greater detail, in a way that would have sounded quite impressive to the listeners. Admitting our weaknesses can help with the identification process which we've just mentioned, but it also can mean making ourselves vulnerable. One analogy might be taking a plaster off a wound and exposing that wound to the elements for good or ill. I was thinking about vulnerability recently in my own case when taking off the, the surgical boot that I'm wearing on a broken toe and exposing that to a bit more vulnerability. But um, I did assure the toe that I'd look after it carefully. More importantly, God through Jesus and the Holy Spirit will protect us when we are vulnerable. So we can risk making ourselves vulnerable. So thirdly, we need to tell our story. Paul had a good story, of which he relates briefly but dramatically here. The full story, as I've mentioned, is described in chapter 9. There is a blinding night light and his name is called twice, Saul, Saul. And he immediately answers, Who 
Who are you, Lord? Which seems to suggest some recognition. But in rabbinic tradition, a blinding light like that from heaven was indicative or interpreted as the voice of God. If a voice came from heaven, it was interpreted as the voice of God. God wants us to reach as many people as we can and giving our testimonies can help. Of course, some people will respond positively, others less so. And we aren't all gifted to stand on a soapbox and evangelise, and quite often that's not appropriate anyway. But we can all tell our own story. We can all tell what Jesus means to us. But fourthly, in terms of those stories, let's just think about who's helped us. That experience on the Damascus Road blinded Paul and he needed help. First, his friends who had seen and heard but had not understood led him into Damascus. Then God called Ananias, a disciple, to go to Paul. Ananias was at first rather reluctant and understandably given, given Paul, who was then Saul's, reputation. But he went and laying his hands on Paul, restored his sight. If we look at our faith journey, there will be people who have helped us at various stages and no doubt we will have helped other people too. Fifthly and finally, what action do we have to take? Paul had been led into the path of Jesus and Jesus had led him to face that mob of people. He had transformed a persecutor into a preacher. Paul is a bit like Christians today. We live in the world but God has separated us and commissioned us for a special task. We are not all going to be clones of Paul but we are called to share in his commission. Let's hear again the final verses of our passage. You will be his witness to all men of what you have seen and heard. And now, what are you waiting for? Get up, be baptised and wash your sins away, calling on his name. So what are we waiting for? Why not take some time and just review your faith journey and be prepared to share it when the appropriate opportunity arises. A moment's quiet and then we will move into our time of prayer. We've heard how Paul persecuted the Christians and then changed his life round. This day, 27th of January, each year is dedicated to remembering those who have suffered in the Holocaust, under Nazi persecution and in subsequent genocides in Cambodia, Rwanda, Bosnia and Darfur. This commemoration was first held in January 2001 and is the date of the anniversary of the liberation of Auschwitz in 1945. So let's share a special prayer for today. God of love, on this day we pray for all those who have suffered as a result of the Holocaust and genocides in other parts of the world including some we may not even be aware of. We pray for your light to shine on all who have lost loved ones and help us to hear the words of survivors. We pray that the victims of such atrocities will never be forgotten by our generation and those who come after us. We pray that the world will resist evil and intolerance and that all can live together in peace and prosperity. Help us, we pray, to be lights in the darkness. Amen. So let's just hold a moment's quiet, shall we, to remember those people and also any others on our hearts at this time in need of God's comfort and healing. Heavenly Father, as you revealed yourself to Saul on the Damascus Road and transformed his life, Send your Holy Spirit into our hearts that we might also be transformed. May we have the courage and wisdom of Paul to share our testimonies and witness, not for our glory, but for yours, and to draw people through Jesus into your saving presence. 
This we ask in and through the name of your Son and our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And so let's join as one, albeit physically separated in places we know not where the others are, but something that unites us throughout the world. Let's, let's join together in the words that Jesus taught us using the contemporary version of the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and for ever. Amen. Well, thank you so much for sharing with me and with all the others too. It's been a great privilege and joy to be with you this morning. And I hope that we can be together in each other's company again very soon. I guess that will be over the airwaves for the time being anyway. But do be uh, keep an eye on our website for what things are happening in the parish because things can change quite quickly um, and it won't be possible to always bring you immediately up to date. But do please be in touch with us if we can help or support you in any way. The whole team is very much here and uh, you can get in touch with any one of us through the parish office. So let's close with a blessing. May the light of God shine upon us, transform our lives and brighten the world. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with us, those we love and those we pray for now and always. Amen.